Hey everyone, Lixie here. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing another teardown. This time we're going to be tearing down the Detector version 2. Oh, well, this is what I call the version 2. This is the second one that we got here in Canada. And uh, without any further ado, we'll get right into it. So we're going to flip it over. There's one, two, three, four, five uh, Phillips head screws. Well, six if you count the battery compartment door. And then screw that as well. That just comes off like so. Let me just double check. Okay, there's none in the battery compartment. So we'll unscrew. These five screws. I'm going to place them where I know they need to go. So that way when we reassemble them, I won't get, uh, won't get confused. So three screws on the left side. and two screws on the right side. Now this should uh, come off like so. the side plates up here. Now we're going to carefully separate the device. Well, that should, that's the reset button. I'm going to put that back into place afterwards. Here are the internals. This next part's gonna be a little tricky because I am not desoldering anything. So it's supposed to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven screws. Eight if you count the one in the pendulum, but I'm hoping that we don't have to screw that on because those pendulums are a nightmare to put back together. Just gonna put the little screws off to the side here because I think all the screws that are holding the motherboard in place are pretty much the same size. That's the last of the small screws. Now I believe this one, this screw right here needs to come up as well. Now I'm hoping that's enough to let everything come up. Just gonna take that out of the way for now. Move the button. I'm gonna try to, uh, okay, so yeah, I gotta be very careful with this. Have to unscrew the pendulum, unfortunately. That just 
comes up like so. Uh, then you have the front chassis with three buttons. I'm gonna try to keep this intact as much as possible. Well, let me just remember the positioning, hold on. So second and then top, okay. So just in case I have to put the pendulum back in if everything falls apart here, which it looks like it just did. And there is the front of the detector itself. As you can see, my screen has a little damage there because um, my buddy dropped it, but still works fine. Yeah, now we're going to carefully try to put this back together. First things first, is I need to get that out of there. So we're gonna place this, place the top half back in its shell, like so. You guys could see why I was hesitant to do this video because not exactly the easiest feat to accomplish. I gotta, I'm going to start with trying to screw the pendulum back in. Because once I get it back into place, it should not be a problem whatsoever. So pendulum goes in like so. The trick is trying to manipulate this on top because I am not desoldering that uh, that cable so we can get it where it needs to go. That looks about correct. I'm going to worry about getting it situated before I worry about getting the spring attached. All right, the pendulum is situated. Now we just gotta... Oh wait, hold on. Yeah, gotta go back a sec. Knew it was too easy. Gotta get that... The loop of the spring in between here. And then it could go back underneath. If you follow this as a guide, just be sure to be a little bit more careful than I was. Although this is my first time taking this thing apart, so science. Pendulums in, just gotta, just gotta get it so the spring gets in there where it needs to go, as well as there we go. I think I got it now. Almost. <laughs> Yeah, I think the, um, for a lot of people, I think the pendulum system here is going to be the most difficult part to work with. Now I just got to hook the spring onto the top hole on the pendulum stick, I guess you'd call that.
Perfect, we're right back up in it. Now we're gonna re-put these little screws. Boy, I tell you the the D3 was a lot easier than this was. Although I do like the fact that the battery terminal soldered up the way it is because it makes me feel like I can put like a lithium ion battery in there. The only question is, is how would I charge it? Although I'm pretty sure if I put a lithium ion battery in here, I could probably put some like wireless charging method to it. I wonder how long the battery would last. I have probably an idea for a future project. Probably try to find some tips from uh, some sort of modding community. Maybe I can get that done and uh, make a video for you guys. Oh, before I tighten that down, I'm going to put the connector back in. Or at least try to put it back in because I feel like I should have put it in before. Which way are you supposed to go? Or does it not matter? You know what? I might have to go back a step. Loosen up the board a bit just so I can get the connector where I'm supposed to get. I should have put that back on beforehand. Always work backwards, guys. Always work backwards. Learn by my mistakes. It should uh, be enough flea way for me to, yeah, that should definitely be enough flea way for me to try to finagle this in here. Yeah, it looks like it goes this way, so this hooks in here. Or I'll hook in when I get it in. Ooh, that does not look good. <laughs> All right, hold on. I'm going to fix this off camera and I'll uh, be right back. <laughs> Wow, 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 wow,